Welcome to another episode of Mass Communication and Video Production. And uh, today our topic will be information and armament, which basically means media and military and their relationship and how media represents military and uh, the world of power and the world of weapons. Now, it's very interesting to uh, find out that what what is the relationship between information and armament? Now you might um, ask me, sir. It's 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 uh, where you know in every kind of uh, information can be disseminated through media, but throughout the history of our development, especially the development of the colonized powers the development of the first world countries, the underdevelopment of the third world countries, the great divide, uh, some of the nations becoming very powerful, some of the nations are uh, becoming very less powerful. Now, uh, the, there are certain reasons uh, why these first world countries become so overarchingly um, influential throughout the world. It's not only about military or the kind of uh, money that you have. It's about investing the money and the military power to the right causes or to rather I should say to the most strategic causes. Now of course um, one might say that uh, um, with of course with bias that Indians are more knowledgeable than um, the Americans but still America is at the top of everything, whether it comes to uh, foreign policies, uh, cinema, entertainment, lifestyle, economy, everything. But in India, there are certain things which uh, has, um, in spite of having a lot of knowledge, it has just um, curbed our power, which is precisely information. And uh, which has a lot of things to do with the representation of the idea of the military and armament. Now, the first thing that we should um, ask ourselves is what do we mean by information, especially in the context of armament and international politics and policies. By information, we are meaning here facts about the world, that's a very literal meaning, facts about the world. The second meaning might be raw material for further or raw information for further use. Now I can get an idea that yes, in Africa, in some uh, village, in some remote nation, in some remote village, there's a kind of a, um, a very um, valuable uh, mining resource. Now how do I get that information? if I have a greater technological power and I have a lot of sources from where I can get all this information and only after that applying human application to that information we can gather knowledge. So information can be a raw material which we can materialize to our advantage. So what we can uh, deduce is Raw materials or raw information can create knowledge. How? The facts, when it comes with human application, we get knowledge. And of course, we know that knowledge is a kind of a wealth. Nowadays, you know that known as the information age, uh, the information highway, the more informed a nation is, the more powerful and wealthy it is. And when you use this kind of information wealth to some strategic causes, you become very powerful. So from information, we can deduce that with a lot of human applications and utilizing this information, we actually can get powerful. Which is quite true for all the previously uh, colonized or previously, um, uh, previously nations, previous nations which were uh, huge colonizers, not the colonized, but the colonizers. It's very interesting to see that if you, even if you um, check your facts right now, you will see that all the first world countries, the very powerful countries, the rich countries, the militarily equipped countries, they have a huge achievement in the colonial past. And most of the 
colonizing countries have become the first world country. In fact, all of them. Now, it's very interesting that uh, West European nations and uh, North America, they are called the first world countries. And uh, of course, this, this uh, Sega, this eternal tale of uh, gathering knowledge from which we can become very powerful began with colonization. Now, the Indians never knew about anything about the about the uh, West Europeans or Britain or, or Portugal or Spain or Netherlands or, or France. But these, uh, these adventurers, these, these um, Sidhu discoverers, they came to, the Europeans I mean, they came to India and gathered a lot of knowledge. And at one point of time we have seen that the British officers, they used to communicate to us in our own language. So a lot of information can make you very powerful, of course, with the application, with human application. Now, in this regard, United Kingdom became the most successful colonizer because they were uh, technologically equipped to gather information and to disseminate a lot of information as well. We have to uh, remind ourselves that the telegraph, one of the first uh, breakthrough uh, communication system was invented by the British and used by the British military. Now, there are certain facts, there are certain uh, ideas which we correlate. Colonization, information becoming very powerful is a sign of progress. Now I'll try to, we will try to decipher and we will try to, um, you know, peel each and every layer and we will try to understand what progress and information um, has to do with each other. Now by progress, we mean intensely related to socio-economic and political change. Of course, when the European powers were coming to Asia and Africa, they were taken for granted to be progressive. So progressive is not only uh, sitting in a rural area and being with yourself. Progressive means outgoing, according to the colonizers, outgoing uh, dissemination of information and becoming powerful. Now, what does the colonies? First and foremost, we extract wealth from the colonies. So a colonizer extracts a lot of wealth from the colonies. Let's say the British Raj or the British rule extracted all the resources from India and, and now look at them, they are huge, they are huge power. And it's uh, of course we cannot allege them because there was a period of time in history when major European powers were colonizing. The wealth which is accumulated from these colonies were used in science and experiments various kinds of experiments and these experiments resulted in invention of a number of instruments just like telegraph and and um, the the first radio and a lot and through these instruments these colonizing powers became more powerful because they could extract use and utilize a lot of information with further information, when someone applies a lot of application to an information, it becomes knowledge. And of course, we just now discussed that knowledge becomes a symbol of power. And applying that knowledge, a nation can get a socio-political control over the other nation. And this, very interestingly, this becomes a cycle. So in a critical way, we can understand that the colonial powers, the, the strategy, that the colonial power started is still uh, is still in process and it is proving to be a, a cyclical um, order now let's uh, uh, start with what are the what are the centers of information which gives us news which gives us a lot of information even the indian press has to get information from some of the major news agencies um, I'll just uh, name four major news agencies of, in, uh, of, of the whole world and all of them belong to the first world country. Uh, Reuters of Britain, Agency France Press, which is AFP, 
United Press International UPI and and Associated Press from United States, very powerful and influential news agencies, and ITAR, TASS from Russia. Now, how do I say that in this contemporary world, the more information you have, uh, the more you have control over your military. So it's, it's a very, uh, you, we can deduce the fact in some simple steps. Okay, biggest news agencies provide information throughout the world. They can extract information from remotest corners of the world and they can also provide information um, to countries like India and, and Pakistan and in, uh, in, in, a, in a transactional purpose. But if you have a lot of information and if you want to use them in a very strategic way, you also hide a lot of information and make and turn them into classifieds. Now, classifieds are something which are uh, highly confidential, which are uh, meant to be used by some, um, by some individual government. No nation in the whole world shares information with other nations in a, in a fully. There are a lot of information which are kept, which are kept secret under the tables and which are only meant to be used by the nation who is extracting it. Anyway, the biggest news agencies, they provide information to the whole world. These news agencies, they have a huge tie-ups with the biggest MNCs, multinational corporations who provide money to the government to the process of capitalism, to the process of, of economic aggression, to the process of economic facilities. Now, these governments or these information um, agencies, they mostly, they have a very good tie-up with the MNCs because they have a financial transaction. The news gives, uh, the news agencies give information to these MNCs and these MNCs in return support these kinds of um, hugely powerful information hubs. Now these MNCs have ties with the government and the government has full control over the military. So in one way or the other, the MNCs also have an interest in the government uh, use of military so that they can extract a lot of resources and at the same time, these MNCs who have a, a, a direct relationship with the military and the government has tie-ups with the military, uh, with the news agencies. So, uh, by this kind of a deduction, we can say that the news bureaus and the information hubs have an indirect, sometimes direct relationship to the military. A country like India or or to be more precise countries in uh, Africa and certain certain parts of uh, Asia they are still developing they are either called underdeveloped or they are called developing nations now these third world countries they are diametrically opposite to what the first world countries are they have uh, information poverty in third world countries so they lack the resources to extract and disseminate information and that's why they are less powerful because they don't have any information through which they can uh, gather knowledge through which they can become powerful so in one way or the other the power of the first world countries depends on the powerlessness of the third world countries there are certain facts historical facts that we should throw light upon Third world countries, they never colonized any nation, but became colonized. They never accumulated any kind of resources from their own country because they had no scientific or technological means. No wealth, that's why there's no wealth, so less knowledge, so scarcely there's any scientific progress. No major media houses. Quite obvious. If you don't, if you are, if you are um, uh, quite impoverished in the arena of information and knowledge, there will be no media houses. And of course, to a great extent, the military doesn't know how to uh, utilize the information and how to become powerful. Okay, uh, we are talking about 2015. We are sitting in 2015, and we can see that. Uh, uh, 
there are different kinds of military inv intervention, wars, battles, bombs are being dropped on nations. And uh, while we talk about this, um, uh, this topic, we cannot just uh, um, overlook the concept of NATO. We all know that NATO is a military, is an amalgamation of nations which are militarily very powerful and their interest is to keep the powerful countries in status quo. NATO is a conglomeration of military power and they have their own news channels, they have their own news resources. So they, uh, they disseminate information according to their own justification and legitimization of military intervention, which is very important. Now, <clears throat> information comes from NATO newsroom, of course, equipped with uh, major news channels and publications throughout the world. Well, uh, if you go through the NATO's website, it will say that NATO's essential purpose is to safeguard the freedom and security of its members through political and military means. So safeguarding the interest of the NATO members through political and military means. There's a very interesting picture that I have in my resource is that NATO's strategies throughout the history it, from 1949 1989, 1990, until 2010, they have a kind of a timeline and they have marked their achievements and future plans according to that timeline. Now, they always had an uneasy relationship between them, the media and the military. Sometimes the media were made to speak on behalf of military, supporting the military interventions, and most of the times, due to democratic <clears throat> and secular interventions, um, uh, they were always uh, criticized by the media. Now, we, we shall just go through what are the things that we, what are the major events which raise these kinds of events. Now, the first and foremost uh, thing was regarding the First World War where a few days ago in a, in a seminal feature based on 100 years of First World War in the newspaper called The Guardian, there was a report that in the first, during the First World War, the First World countries, they literally molded, threatened the media to report uh, things which were not facts or which were not true. And uh, there were, um, the journalists were even threatened uh, for life <clears throat> if they do not report on behalf of the representing uh, nation or, or the intervening nation. During this period of time, propaganda became facts and they were being published in newspapers in order to mold the psychology or the ideology of the readers. During the Second World War, something very important and uh, interesting happened. During 1938, even after Adolf Hitler, in spite of annexing a few nations like Austria and Czechoslovakia, he was named as Man of the Year in the Time magazine of 1938. So, a powerful, one of the most powerful uh, person in Europe, and he was uh, hoisted as, put up as the hero, as one of the heroes and man of Europe. At, at that point of time. Media was used for propaganda purpose both by the Allies, I mean the, the France, uh, the French Army, the United States and Great Britain and as well as by the Axis powers which comprised of Germany, Italy and Japan. And uh, a very interesting and tragic thing happened, we all know that uh, the, the devastation which was caused in Hiroshima and Nagasaki near the end of the Second World War. And most of the American media portrayed them as one of the achievements and one of the powerful implications as a proof that yes, how United States was powerful than all the other nations of the world. But a major media throughout the world was very harsh and critical of this inhuman um, tale of history. Now, let's talk about another war which became almost a kind of a media war, a media event. 
I'm talking about the Vietnam War, whose repercussions were even felt in Calcutta and, and throughout the world. During the Vietnam War, television was the overarching influential media and news regarding the Vietnam War during the initial days of the war was one-sided. Of course, um, the information, uh, news channels, most of them belonged to the Americans who waged a war in Vietnam and it was a proxy war um, with Russia, a part, just a part of Cold War. And uh, we find that a lot of information was hidden, a lot of uh, triumphs were, were portrayed in spite of thousands of innocent civilians getting killed in Vietnam. But later on, a lot of media houses turned against United States. Uh, a lot of media houses in United States turned against United States and advocated against the war. So Vietnam War created or, or just broke the American society into two halves. We can see it in, in the music industry, in the film industry. And um, this was due to the, uh, the two halves of media, one half supporting the war, one half was against the Vietnam War. There were films which supported the cause of war in Vietnam, supported the cause of war in Russia, in, against uh, uh, the communists. There are certain films like uh, Tom Hanks' Forrest Gump, Where Eagles Dare, True Lies, which uphold the might of the American military. Mi American military as heroes saving the nation. The most important of them, the iconic of them being uh, Rambo Part Two. And again, of course, regarding Second World War, there was another film uh, called Saving Private Ryan, which was a major hit. But there were also criticism of war, which um, uh, showed the ravages of war and how it can ruin humanity and uh, can make a, a, a person, a civilization go insane. There were films like Apocalypse Now, Dr. Strangelove and Full Metal Jacket, which really gave us an impression how military and armament and, and intervention of violence in a civilization can cause great, uh, great devastations. Well, with that, we come to an end of discussion of this uh, topic of military and media information and armament. I hope uh, you have, as you uh, listen to me, you have a lot of questions, a lot of things to ponder upon. With that, we end this show. Thank you.